Hey everybody, thank you for joining me tonight on Facebook Live. Tonight is Tuesday and typically uh, we would be doing our infidelity recovery call on Monday nights, but I have just been so swamped uh, with so many clients that last night just went on for too long, but I, I wanted to remain committed to what we do uh, by showing up here tonight. And so I want to talk to you guys tonight for just a few moments. I know that we're preparing to hear President Obama's final farewell, and many of us are both excited and saddened by that reality. Uh, so I promise not to be with you too long here tonight, but our last time that we met, we talked about um, how it's important for the unfaithful partner to understand the pain that the hurt partner goes through, that when an affair has, occur has occurred, there is a long, for some couples, a long recovery process. And there are many trials and tribulations and situations. But tonight, I kind of wanted to switch gears. I wanted to talk about um, understanding the importance of the pain that the unfaithful partner goes through. I think that when dealing with affairs, typically we deal in the context of understanding the hurt partner. And so obviously he or she has been the one that has been violated. He or she is the one in this situation who has uh, been victimized. And so that's the role that they're playing, victim. I don't mean that in a cynical way, but they are in essence the victim of, of what has occurred. And so the focus is on them. And I think that unfortunately what we do is we discount the struggles that the unfaithful partner endures. And I think that the more we begin to have these Facebook Live discussions, the more you're going to begin to realize that a person who is unfaithful to their spouse, it is not because they're evil or wicked or sinister or diabolical and are on the prowl and have intentionally gone out to destroy their relationships. That unfortunately, sometimes we wind up in situations and circumstances, we've established relationships with people and we haven't had the prop proper boundaries and borders in those relationships to protect it. And before you know it, we've slipped into what we will call inappropriate interactions and things begin to take place. Now, a lot of times, for some, it is a willful act and it's very intentional. And others, I don't say made a mistake because I don't want to minimize what it is. I don't believe it's a mistake because one plus one equals three is a mistake. One, you know, so, but when you have an affair, that is an error in judgment. I think that would be more of a fair analysis. And so the state of mind, the state of being, the relational state of affairs that that couple may be in creates such a vulnerability that unfortunately an affair occurs. And so the question becomes, what is it that the hurt partner endures? I would say that there are generally five emotions that the unfaithful partner, excuse me, the unfaithful partner struggles with that I want to quickly, in an abbreviated fashion, go over tonight. Um, and if you understand these emotions, I think that it would help for the hurt partner, as weird as this may sound, to have sympathy or empathize with the partner who's violated the relationship. Because you have to understand that as you recover as a couple, there is a different individual recovery process for the hurt partner and the unfaithful partner. They're going through completely different things. So if all of our attention is focused on the hurt partner and the hurt partner heals, but there's no recovery process for the unfaithful partner, right? Then what happens is we can wind up entering back into a pattern of unfaithfulness because corrections weren't being made, healing wasn't being done, uh, issues we just scratched the surface, but we did not go deep enough to find out the root cause of the problem that led to the affair in the first place. And so when dealing with some of these emotions, I would say, after working with countless couples, that for the unfaithful partner, whether male or female, a lot of times they struggle with regret. And regret, obviously you want to have some form of regret for what was done, right? Of course, because you want to show that you are sorry, that you're apologetic and repentful of, of your deeds and your actions. But to live a life of regret is a horrible thing to do because you wake up every morning, you live life each day. Every time you interact with your spouse and with your children, you have this spirit, this heavy spirit of regret on you. And what happens is when you're living in regret, you don't feel worthy. You don't feel like you deserve 
uh, the people who are still in your life, your spouse and your children. And so oftentimes you're having internal conversations with yourself about how bad you are and how much harm you cause. And there should be a healthy degree of that. But oftentimes that can become very unhealthy. And what happens is it impedes how we interact with our family. And so the healing that we're looking for ultimately doesn't happen. There becomes a breach in the relationship and there's almost like an emotional disconnect and we hold ourselves back from re-engaging with the her, the her partner, giving him or her the healing that they need, but also acknowledging that we need healing ourselves. And so regret is, is a horrible, horrible feeling to endure when you're in a relationship. Another thing that I think that uh, unfaithful partners really struggle with is shame. Okay, and I'll couple that with a third, which is guilt. So guilt and shame are like cousins. Now, in terms of placing blame, I think it's, it's, it's important that if an unfaithful partner has violated the relationship, they need to take personal responsibility for his or her deeds or actions. That yes, the relationship wasn't where it needed to be. Yes, you two weren't getting along possibly, or possibly everything was going well, and you let you were led astray. Taking personal responsibility for what you did is great, but when you begin to live in guilt and shame, once again, much like regret, it causes an emotional disconnect. Now, I have seen both men and women who violated the relationship literally crumble before my very eyes, begin to wither away. Emotionally, they begin to decline. Spiritually, they begin to decline. And that's another piece. Because when you are living in regret, shame, and guilt, you're, you, you've disconnected a relationship with God and you feel like there's nothing that, that I could ever do uh, that is worthy of God forgiving me. So not only do we struggle with forgiving ourselves, a lot of times we don't believe that God forgives us. And so if you're operating with that frame of mind, it will negatively impact the relationship that you have with your spouse and with your children. So I want to help release you of those emotions and of those of those feelings because it literally will cripple your relationship. And then a uh, fourth, there's a feeling of helplessness because here you are, you're trying to work things out and it seems like every time you take two steps forward, you wind up taking three steps back. And so you throw up your hands and you're like, I just don't, I just don't know what to do. You know, if I could take a phrase that I've heard several men and women say who have violated the relationship and are trying to rebuild and restore, it is this, I just don't know what to do. Because every attempt I make to do something that is good, it is either acknowledged for a moment, but we slip right back into our bad negative state, or it's not acknowledged at all and it's turned around and used against me. I think one of the biggest things that the hurt partner has to be mindful of is that while you are recovering, you should not turn or t turn your partner, if you will, into a punching bag, a verbal punching bag where you beat him down, you tear her apart, you physically uh, uh, are aggressive and hit and kick and scream and abuse your partner. And a lot of times when that happens, uh, the hurt partner is doing that because they are in so much pain that they want their partner to feel the pain that they have caused. And so no matter what the issue or the situation in life may be, um, oftentimes it goes right back to we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And the reason why I'm going through is because of you. And if it was, and so all of a sudden, no matter what the issue is, whether it's related to the affair or not, if it's just regular life situations, he or she becomes the fall guy for all things that don't go well in the relationship. And so that keeps you in a stuck place. And I think that for the hurt partner, they have to realize that you have got to begin to transition forward into your healing. Now, nobody can legislate your pain. Nobody can legislate your recovery process, right? So nobody can say, you should be much further than you are right now. What, why, why is this taking you so long? We should be past this already because everybody's different. However, I would say that each of us as individuals have to do our best to work through the process. There's a, a lot of heavy lifting that the hurt partner must endure 
endure to reach their healing place. But in that process, I don't want you to take out your anger, your rage, your aggression on your spouse because it only winds up making the relationship worse. So a lot of times just being honest, working with both husbands and wives, hurt partners and unfaithful partners, there's a lot of vengeance, if you will. Uh, it's almost like, you know what, I'm going to get you. For everything you did, for everything you made me go through, I'm going to get you. And, and the reality is all of us have a different tolerance level. I've worked with couples where there has been emotional affairs, no physical contact whatsoever, uh, and it, it crippled the relationship. I've worked with other couples where there have been literally... I don't have enough fingers and toes to count how many partners someone had. It crippled the relationship. You know, I've, I've dealt with uh, uh, couples where there has been short term, one night stands, it, whatever the case may be, everybody's response is different. But I think ultimately what I'm saying is it's important for you to understand that both of you are going through a level of pain. Right. And so while you're both in a weakened state to a degree, you have to be there for one another. Right. There is the acknowledgement of the hurt of the unfaithful partner of the of the harm that he or she has done. And it's got to be a constant reminder so that the hurt partner feels as though, you know what, he does remember. She does acknowledge what has happened and why I am in the state that I am. But at the same time, both of you have to come together and have a plan of action and have a vision for your future that you're not going to be in this place forever, that you're going to slowly crawl your way out of that. And at times the hurt partner is going to feel worn down like a like a rag and the, and, the, and the unfaithful partner has to help build that person up and vice versa. So when you're weak and your partner's strong, you have to be there for them, whatever side of the fence that you may be on. I think that the fifth emotion that a lot of unfaithful partners feel and really struggle with is a feeling of hopelessness. Because you have to understand the, the, the unfaithful partner literally is tormented every single day of this recovery process, whether you realize it or not. They are internally having conversations with themselves and beating themselves down, stuck in fear, stuck in shame, stuck in guilt, stuck in hopelessness and helplessness. And as much as they're putting themselves through, you know, when you begin to violently attack physically or verbally or emotionally beat down your partner, it just weakens them, you know, even more so. So there's got to be a time, even in the midst of the recovery process, when you're fighting and fussing, that you learn how to take a break. You know, even when two armies, two opposing militaries, two opposing nations go to war with one another, they do have uh, moments of peace where they retreat for a period of time. Right. And so I think it's important that you begin to do that with your partner just to take a break, just to go in different places, to allow yourselves to recover. And it's important to understand, and I always like to give this analogy, if you've ever been on a roller coaster before, now we know that some people love roller coasters and some people absolutely hate them. But imagine a couple, a husband and a wife, they're in the front seat car of a roller coaster and the roller coaster ride is a good minute and a half. And they're on this journey together at the same time. They experience the same twists and turns. They experience the same, uh, you know, I don't know, the, the, the slow incline and the quick decline. They've experienced the same thing. But by time that ride is over, one partner is excited and, you know, ready to go and get right back into the front seat and do it all over again. And then the other partner is dealing with fears and phobias and they're full of anxiety and they make an internal vow that they will never go on a roller coaster again. Now, the interesting about the thing about this, they went on the same journey, but their experience in that journey was completely different. Likewise, in the recovery process of a hurt and an unfaithful partner, their experience, even though the journey is the same, they're on the journey together, their experiences are very different. And I think that we need to begin to understand and begin to ask the questions of the faithful partner about what he or she is going through mentally and emotionally and spiritually. And in that process, do what we can do to help heal that person as it helps to heal the relationship. Now, I'm telling you what I experienced working with countless uh, couples across the country and throughout the world. There are people who call me from South Africa, from London, uh, from Europe, obviously within the States, the Caribbean, and no matter where we are, 
no matter what our geographical location may be, no matter what our faith tradition may be, no matter what our ethnicity, our culture, or our race, the impact of infidelity is generally the same across the board. And so I am here every single week to provide a little glimpse of, of what is necessary for you to do as a couple to help begin to restore the relationship. Now, last point I want to make is this. When dealing with the unfaithful partner, you have to understand that if we look at the story of Adam in the Bible, Adam and Eve, when Eve, when Adam, excuse me, was in direct relationship with God, Adam was given direct instructions from God in terms of what was in the garden, what trees he could touch and eat from. And so Eve, who did not have that relationship, wound, what, according to the story, grabbed a piece of fruit and convinced Adam to partake. So in this particular act, he was so enamored, he was so in love, he was so enthralled by Eve that he broke or severed his relationship with his father and pursued the desire and the will of Eve by biting into that particular fruit. That led to the fall of man. In that experience, we see where Adam gained so little to lose so much. Oftentimes when we participate in illicit affairs, we're gaining so little, but what do we gain? We gain what would be considered the sweet nectar of a forbidden fruit. But that is an experience that lasts for moments. You know, sorry about that. Oftentimes they say it's a moment of pleasure, but a lifetime of pain. I've also heard someone say that love is for hours, sex is for minutes, orgasms are for seconds. And oftentimes we are willing to put our marriages in a, vul a vulnerable position due to a few seconds of pleasure. And I'm here to let you know that it is not worth it. If you are an individual who is tempted or you know, considering entering into an affair, consider the life of, of Adam and how much he lost. Think about what he lost. He gained so little to lose so much. Number one, he lost his connection with God. Number two, it wrecked his relationship with his wife, Eve. Number three, he was thrown out of the garden. So his wealth, his prosperity, his domain, his relationships, vertical, horizontal, all of those things were affected through this one act. Now, these are the consequences of our actions. Even though God forgives, even though we can be restored, there are natural consequences that take place when a relationship is violated. But that does not have to be the end of the story. Regardless of the consequences that will come, you can rebuild, you can restore, you can regain all that was lost, you can have a double portion if you go through the correct recovery process. I can't tell you how many couples who I know personally, who have uh, actually established a better, more healthy relationship after the affair than what they had prior to the affair. Somehow the exposure of the affair shows all of the vulnerabilities, all of the issues, all of the challenges that exist in the relationship. And now you have the ability to begin to do the work to begin to perform the surgery by getting the assistance and the help that you need to recover all. And so I know many couples that if you saw them today, there's not a spot, there's not a blemish, there's no residue of the pain that they've experienced in their past because they went through the proper recovery process. But if this is something that you're attempting to do on your own, you have a hard road ahead. Everybody needs help and assistance to recover when they're experiencing the pain of the affair. And so I want to just leave this quick message off by stating that we should absolutely acknowledge the pain that the hurt partner goes through because they are the ones who have been violated. In essence, they've been sideswiped. It feels like the rug has been pulled from underneath their feet. But at the same time, I do not want you to discount the pain. And when I say pain, listen, I'm not just talking about men because I know statistically it's, it's suggested that men my phone is just ringing off the hook. This is crazy. Oftentimes, we're dealing with the unfaithful partner who's a man. But I just want to let you know that there's countless women who have made the same mistake, who are living in regret, 
who are living in pain and shame. And so because of that, emotionally, as much as the hurt partner is emotionally wrecked, the, the unfaithful partner struggles with low self-esteem. The unfaithful partner struggles with low self-worth. The unfaithful partner rather hide in the shadows. It's almost like, you know, when an affair has occurred, you're not only unfaithful to your spouse, but you've become unfaithful to the entire family. So not only are you in a strained relationship with your wife or your husband, but now the kids are impacted and those parental child, what we call vertical relationships are negatively impacted. So there's a lot to recover. There's a lot to rebuild. And in that process, sometimes that unfaithful partner needs to be strengthened by you if you were the hurt partner to let them know that, babe, we can make it through this, that I didn't go anywhere. You're still here. Let's just put in the work and do what is necessary to recover all. So I just want you to be aware that there is a level of pain and I don't care uh, whether that unfaithful partner verbally articulates that pain or not. All unfaithful partners are experiencing pain. So it may be a good time to have a conversation to allow him or her to open up and to share what it is that they're going through on, an, on, on any given day. You know, it's good to do assessments every now and then and to figure out as a couple what you two can begin to do to not only restore, help restore one another, but restore the relationship. Thank you guys. I hope that this was helpful. I've gotten a tremendous response based upon our uh, series on uh, infidelity recovery. I just want to let you know that this is just an inkling of what you can begin to experience when you receive professional help. You can recover all. So for those that are seeking counseling, feel free to reach out to me. You can inbox me. Go to couplesacademy.org. That's couplesacademy.org. Find out about our services. We would love to work with you. We provide weekly counseling sessions, half-day solutions, uh, what we call our private marriage, uh, private marriage intensives, which is a three-day, 72-hour uh, experience, which is equivalent to 16 weeks of counseling, where most of our clients have seen uh, some of their major breakthrough. And so we just want to let you know that we love you. Uh, we're here to support you. Uh, if you are not a member of the Audacity of Marriage group on Facebook, join the group. There's so much more content that we deliver all throughout the week in that particular group. So sign up for that. Love you. See you next week. God bless you.